Okay, so my friend Thomas asked if I could do a quick tutorial to teach him how to take super old textures from New Vegas and turn them into brand new high resolution textures. So people have been asking me to do this for a really long time, decided I would go ahead and give it a shot. I actually had to stop this tutorial like three separate times this morning and then go off and do boring adult stuff all day. <clears throat> but I'm back and I decided I would just go ahead and do a voiceover recording of this. So here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking these cool ass bottles and we're going to be upgrading them from tiny little like two, like 256 resolution textures up to 2048, which is like the modern new generation. You can see that the new bottles right here have a lot more detail to them. They're a lot more faceted. The light plays off of them a lot cooler. The transparency works out really great. And yeah, you kind of have that nice effect of there being like a chill to it, like some perspiration on the bottle. Maybe that's not quite so fit for a wasteland, but it's cool for the iced Nuka Cola. So here's what we're gonna do. You can see me doing some refinagling. We're actually exporting these from the BSA, going ahead and exporting those textures to our desktop, getting all that stuff set up. And then we're gonna, apparently I decided I wanted to do the caps for some reason. I guess I'll texture that someday. But here is what it looks like in NIFScope with just the normal applied. It's really kind of muddy. It's really easy to see why it needs to be retextured. It's just sad and old. So we're going to import those textures into the engine and you can see how tiny they are. That's, <laughs> that is the normal map at like 200% that just went by. That's the big version of it, apparently, because consoles think that 256 is the large size. So we went ahead and we blew it up to 2048, which by changing the image size. And you're going to copy the diffuse texture over on top of the normal so you can kind of see where we're going with this. And then you're going to reduce the opacity on them in a second. First, we need to run Indu, stick it up there in the corner after it's on, let it do its thing throw away that useless piece of trash it just gave us. And now you're gonna reduce those opacities down. And those are gonna act as our templates so that we can copy over top of that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create another layer and we're gonna start picking what we wanna start on first. I decided I wanted to start on these um, little circles. I had no idea what they were. I mean, I, I went ahead and I referenced the mesh. It turns out those are the bottom of the bottle. News to me. I probably could have gone ahead and added like some cool concentric rings like like the bottom of actual Coke bottles have, but I didn't know what they were at the time. I probably could have done some research and figured that out. But we went ahead and we created a little extrusion, popped it up, just taking the shape tool, making a circle, and then going over to that DDo box up in the top left where I stuck it, and then compare and contrast to what you originally had go overhead, I'm making, using my brush, uh, a couple of indentations on the top. And then on the top one, which looked like it had a little bit more of an indentation that wasn't quite even, I went ahead and erased it in the middle a little bit so that it kind of came out uneven. Set the direction towards the down so you can kind of see that pop up. And that, that kind of mirrored what was there on the normal map. I didn't know it was the bottom of the bottle at the time. Now I know, I probably could have done better on it. Uh, this is actually the cap, um, which again, on the mesh, it's not actually using all of this real estate because apparently Bethesda, when they were making their models, a lot of the times they decided they didn't want to use the full UV map. They just kind of stuck stuff on there. <laughs> so the outside edges of this are where the cap is cinched. So I went ahead and I took a fuzzy soft brush and cut those edges away. And that kind of gives you the appearance of it being cinched onto the top. And that kind of just took a couple of seconds. It's not bad. Let that get done for a moment. You use the fuzzy brush when you want to give yourself a drop off effect, like a gradient, so that when you process it into a normals map, you can kind of see that it has those cool height edges. You turn off the layers and you see it's kind of, it looks like a cinched bottle cap from top. I'm softening the edges because my fuzzy brush kind of introduced a little bit of a weird gradient that I didn't like. 
and then I reduced the opacity a little bit to even it out. Now we're gonna make that little divot on top. I'm gonna make that bigger and make it fuzzy. Soften it up a little bit. And then we're gonna take another brush, just a soft fuzzy brush, turn it white, and then draw a circle around the edges. Do this by hand the old fashioned way, not using fancy tools like Lazy Zuli or something, which actually allows you to draw around a circle. Set the direction to down, make it softer again so that it blends in with what was originally there on the vanilla texture. And then I went ahead and did the same kind of process to these little ribs. That's pretty easy. You just take a fuzzy brush. Uh, the fuzziness again giving you a drop off gradient effect. Draw some lines onto it. And actually went ahead and, and deleted that just kept the middle one because that was the one that looked the best. It was actually fitting to what was there. I just went ahead and copied those over. All right, and there we go. Merge those into one group. And again, use DDo to transform that really fast. And now we've got those ribs back. Also making them softer because again, the fuzzy brush, if you're not using your pressure settings just right, tends to give you a little bit of a gradient. And that's what mine was doing at the time. So, drew another line. That one gives you that rib that's across the top. You can kind of see that there's some finer details, like some striations that go across the glass. I decided I wasn't gonna do those on the normal map and I was just gonna have a clean normal to start with. I went ahead and, and made those striations later on uh, in a different direction using DDo, which we'll switch to in a little bit. And this one just kinda makes the, the edge background. This is actually dumb and I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, when I introduced that fine line to the edge along the side, that created a, a, a kind of a gross seam that I didn't need. So I probably ought not to have done that, but that's okay. You live and learn. All right, so after we got those ribs done, I went ahead and started working on the Nuka-Cola emblem, which because I'd already done this tutorial twice by this point, I was just kind of like, eh, well, I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna go back to the one that I already drew in the first version when I went through this tutorial. <laughs> so I already drew the Nuka-Cola symbol and we're just gonna create a, a little bit of an extrusion on there. The same process as everything else. It's a little bit sharp here, but if you don't need to create a raised edge, to like in real labels, this would just be flat and that would be okay. But I decided I wanted to add a little bit of an embossment to it just to really draw it out, create a little bit more visual interest, which again, isn't necessary and you could skip that. Um, just kind of slap it on there, but it does create a little bit more visual interest when you can see it uh, pop up around those edges. Okay, so now I've drawn all of the basic fields that's going to be on our new Coca-Cola. You can get an idea of what they're gonna look like. We're gonna go ahead and navigate over to a place where we can save these out as a new new Coca-Cola bottle. This can be whatever you want it to be. 
we're just saving out and exporting our basic maps. We're going to create an, uh, an ambient occlusion map, which is an AO from the normal in Indu. This is going to give us details that in a lot of old engines, especially uh, the creation engine, uh, things like Oblivion, Fallout 3, even Skyrim to a lesser extent, they don't have a proper ambient occlusion rendering system in the game. They actually fake all their AO. So baking out an AO map um, is our way to work around that because modern engines, Fallout 4 kind of fitting into that, if you're following this for a Fallout 4 tutorial, you don't need to do this step of baking out an AO because you don't, you don't need that map. Like... You can have that map separate, I mean. You do need an AO map, I think, in Fallout 4. I actually haven't screwed with it, so I don't know. But in any other engine, like Unreal or, or CryEngine or Lumberyard, whatever it is that you're using for your development, you're going to want to have an ambient occlusion map. Uh, what I'm doing now that I've got my AO and my normal done is I'm going to start creating color fields they just kind of drop on top of everything. So, like this is a blue. That turns out that it was the bottom of the bottle. I didn't know that at the time. I wish I did. I would have made some more normal information on there, but whatever. But I could tell that it was blue, so I made it blue so that it would fit the behavior of the bottle up on the other side. That one was obviously a different material. Um, it turns out that that is... That red X is there because I, I just didn't know what the hell it was. It turns out that that is the soda on the inside of the transparency that you cannot see uh, both in Indu nor can you see it in NIF tools because the Bethesda tools don't exist and NIF tools is third party and NIF tools does not have a transparency thing. So I couldn't tell what that stuff was. Like it was so low resolution that there was just no information. So I made it a kind of a coppery color to fit what was there, and then I figured it out as I went later on. It turns out that that was a, a good call, because I'll show you at the end how that worked out, and creating that kind of a copper color actually made the soda look like soda. Now we're gonna do the glass. Um, I didn't know that it was like, like again, the bottom of the bottle and the glass were separate at the time, so I made them two different material bases. That was dumb, but again, you kind of live and learn. There was a lot of unused real estate on this map that I really didn't know what it was, but that's okay. Uh, this is actually flattening the normals map. I tried to just take it out and flatten it, and that doesn't work. So what you do is you just collapse the stack, hitting Control e and then go up to your hue and saturation, turn the lightness all the way to white, and then you can go ahead and colorize it that way. I went ahead and I, I drew the lines also. All right, and now this is for the red. So I just kind of stuck that on red, and there you go. Changing the background to black just to get it out of the way. And you, and you never want to have any remaining like RGB colors. You want everything to be a, like a single pan tone. You don't want to have like random pixels in there of different colors. Because once you get it over into Dedu, it will try to assign each and every color that you have on the entire map a material ID. And if that happens, you're going to get these tiny one pixel material maps. That you're going to be really confused trying to figure out where do those things belong. And they don't belong anywhere. So just make sure that everything is either transparent, it's black, or it's a single solid color. You don't want to have any kind of diffusion whatsoever. Save that out as a color map, as a TGA file. Only needs to be 24-bit. It really doesn't even need to be that. It could just be 16 or 8. So you can save it. Uh, you're going to need to grab the object, the OBJ file, and just export it really fast from your NIF. Toss it wherever it belongs, preferably in the folder that you're going to be saving to because that's where a DD is going to look. Drag in your color map. Drag in your normal map. 
which I had a Photoshop file for, and then bring in that ambient occlusion file, the AO. Now you're not going to use your PBR, lash, the non-PBR lash gen. If you're doing something like Fallout 4 or something in CryEngine, then you can use a different preset, but we're using the old ones, just has an albedo, a specular, a gloss, and a normal map. That's because old engines only used those four, and Bethesda only used three of them. One of which they stuck into the normals map, which you'll see later. And that's like an alpha channel of the normal, and that's really awkward. But it's all right. So now you're going to open up 3Do because it doesn't turn on automatically when you open up um, your new materials. I'll let that load. And then our bottle was rotated. So if you hold Shift, Control, and Alt at the same time, you can kind of navigate the lights around. I decided I was going to brighten mine up so I can get a little bit more of a difference. And you can see that the AO is really dark and ugly. I don't like that, but that's okay. We're going to fix it later on when we recombine these maps. Um, if you hold Shift and C, that brings up your ability to select colors on the mesh. I went ahead and selected the big blue area. Uh, the glass, which you can find as a material preset, is pretty cool. The dirty glass is what I went with. The bottle glass is a little bit too clean, as you'll see here. If you select the right, where it's currently black, it brings up this color menu, and that will give you the ability to colorize your map. I decided that was a little bit too clown, too clown colored. And it's a little bit wonky. Decided I needed to add some more detail to the normal map, so I used the cracked concrete, which adds these really deep, dark, nice cracks, which you'll see in a lot of my textures because I kind of abused this one. Uh, if you reduce the opacity to almost nothing, it takes all of the color away. Reduce the specular, bring it up on the normals map a little bit so that it's a, it pops a little bit more. You can see it moving in the light there. There you go. And then, again, specular, bring it all the way down because you don't want it interfering. Bring up the specular on the glass so it shines a little bit better. I decided to balance it out and add a little color to it for now so it looks a little bit prettier in the render window. Bethesda games do not use color in the specular channel, which is a shame because that would have been real cool. So this one is to add a little bit of dirt because the concrete has these really cool white spots on it. If you change the color over to blue, those little spots remain and it gives you like a little bit of a dirty kind of color to it. Just really cool. Again, remove the gloss and the specular so it doesn't show up and interfere with the fact that this is a glass texture and not a concrete texture. We're just using it to add a little bit of visual difference and white spots. So now we're going to go ahead, we're going to add, um, I thought like some dark corrosion looks really good because this bottle is supposed to be in a post apocalyptic universe. It needs to be dirty. If you hit the white, that is your masking options. And then up there in the top, you can turn that on, pick out a brush. You got a bunch of different presets in there. I'm just using the soft one for now to erase. This is just clearing off a bunch of junk that we don't need. It doesn't need to be dirty everywhere. Um, that won't even show up in the final product. As we're, you're, not really, you're not really painting right now to get explicit, perfect colors. You're kind of aiming ahead like an archer. You don't want to aim for your colors to be where they are currently. You want to aim for where you want them to be in the future when they finally get into the engine. So this is going to be a little bit ugly. It's going to be a little bit dirty, but the end product is actually going to look a lot nicer because we're, we need to exaggerate details because this is going to be largely transparent. And if the details are not exaggerated and kind of garish in this, they're not even going to show up at all whatsoever when they're slightly transparent in the GEC. So again, just messing with colors a little bit, getting it kind of roughly where I want it. Remembering that this is going to be transparent, it's not going to be this bright clown blue, um, but we need that blue to really read through, so it needs to be a lot more extreme than you would normally have it for like a physically accurate representation of a bottle's glass. 
I added this aluminum with some aluminum scratches. You can go ahead and go into your masks again, which is going to be this little thing down here. And there's a light scratches that you can find. And those just add like little specular highlights of scratched glass. Adds a little bit more of a visual difference in information. It really, it probably will not show up when it becomes transparent, and I knew that at the time. I just wanted to toss it in there. I decided I wanted the information to come from those different maps, would you see, those, those sliders. You have your ambient occlusion, you have your object space normals that you can draw from. The object space normals allow you to determine which direction the scratches could be coming from. So if they're all coming from the top, you assign them the top color of the, like the object space normal. Or if you want them to appear in cavities only and things like that. Um, this is going to be applying a plastic color, like a dirty plastic to the red label. This comes across as being a little bit too clean. So I went in and I added, I think went ahead and added the PVC white and then just went ahead and colored all of them with some details on top. All right, so yeah, we're gonna add some of that concrete again, just use the same trick. Lighten it up a little bit so it looks white, reads white. That's too much. Tone it down a little bit so that you get some more contrast. And now you can see that's a little bit dirty. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do the bottom of the bottle, which I now know is the bottom of the bottle. I wish I had known that when I first started this tutorial and did this twice. Um, yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and make it blue. Again, there probably should be some like concentric circles on there, something that makes it look like it's the bottom of a bottle and not like a telescope lens. That was an oversight on my part. Durr. Let's go ahead and add the metal to the top. That's going to be the cap. I really wish that Bethesda, for whatever reason, hadn't cropped out those cool cinch marks on their UVs because that would have added a lot more visual detail. It looks a little bit ugly, and I think I point that out in a minute, where there's like this hard like division on that old model. And when you're upgrading textures like this, it doesn't really matter what game you're doing. If you're doing like Homeworld Remastered or something, like you can see that annoying gross line that's like really hard and harsh. There really should have been those cool cinch marks here. That would have made this look a lot better. But if you're working on old models, and you want to make it accurate to what was there, and you don't want to have to go back and remesh everything, make new UVs, bake new normal maps, and all this stuff. This is a quick way to go ahead and, and do that. Because I've already done this tutorial twice, I had that conveniently located. I decided I didn't want to have to hand paint my own Nuka Cola logo. Uh, when you make, uh, when you're dragging an object like this into DDU. You want to stick it all the way at the very top of your layers and then move it into place. Finagle it until you get it roughly where you want it to be. I think that's the middle of the cap. I set it to an overlay so that it's, it blends in a little bit better and drags out some of the underlying details. Now you drag your window window back up. That little refresh button right here allows you to refresh when you bring in something new, and that's not right. So let's move that over where it belongs. There we go. And then refresh it again. There you go, now it's centered. And you can do the same thing. You can just copy that really fast. Control C. Play around with the settings really quick to see if you can get a little bit more visual difference on there, bring out a little bit more contrast. I think in the end I decided I wanted to keep it on the overlay anyway. But go ahead and copy that layer over, hit control V, stick it at the very top, and now it's going to be on your specular layer. That way, if you really want this, this is an unnecessary step in this case, but you can actually use the white to create like a metal see-through effect. This one is a little bit too extreme and too ridiculous, and it's not going to show up in the GEC because 
that rendering engine does not handle specular maps very well and it doesn't know it did not have a very good physical understanding of how metalness works so it's really unnecessary to do that i just kind of left it on there a little bit so that it, the white shines a little bit more like it would in real life um, then i'm going to go back and work on the label a little bit more And you really can't see the inside of, like, for whatever reason, DDo also does not have an understanding of how transparency works, and there are no settings to make transparency function. So to be able to see the Coca-Cola, which is inside the bottle, you really can't eyeball that at all. You can't even see it. It's not even inside the mesh, unfortunately. So I went ahead and I picked an organic, uh, kind of liquidy-looking stuff. And it turned the bottle into, well, you'll see it in a second. All right, so now we have this kind of bloody flesh-colored penis-looking thing. And we're going to go back to the main menu, hitting that little arrow. And then we're going to try to assign it to that color, which should be right up there in the top right corner. And it didn't because my morning sucked <laughs> and it was just a morning where like yeah ddo is going to be very beta-y this morning and apparently we're not going to be able to use drop down context menus so if you want to assign a material id that you cannot see on your mesh which happens sometimes and is very annoying ouch go ahead and delete that and then you can right click out in the middle of that field and you can actually go ahead, I went ahead and assigned like a copper metal so it would not look like a, a bloody molested penis because that was just unfortunate. And I think it could hear the mean things we were saying about it and decided not to cooperate, which I don't blame it for. So I made a copper color and the copper actually turned out it worked super good. It actually does look like, like soda inside the bottle later on. That also did not turn out the way that I wanted it to. And you can assign things by material ID by right-clicking. And now it should pop up where we want it. That brings up the big context menu where we got the color assignments. So even if you have a modular texture and you don't have information on your mesh, or if you have like a multi-part mesh where like that flag that I was making the other day had a flag pole along the top and I just wanted to work on the flag at the time, um, you can use that material ID assignment to import those. After you've exported all of your maps and you've got them out of DDoo, go ahead and drag them back into Photoshop. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on this diffuse layer. And you can tell that there's no ambient occlusion information and it, and it looks really flat. All of the details kind of sucked out of it. And if you're working on Fallout 4, that is where you need to stop. Like, you're done. These maps are what you need for the Fallout 4 engine. But on the older generation engines, they needed to add the ambient occlusion to the diffuse so that you could actually see it. So what I do is I take the normal map, I copy and paste it in there, and then I set it to black and white, and then I add it as an overlay. And that gives you all of your shadowy information back. I went ahead and I, I copied the AO on top of it too, but those are too dark and kind of ugly, and I don't like them, especially on those ribs and those caps in the bottom of the bottle. So I'm going to take my fuzzy brush, and I'm just going to erase it right down the middle. I'm going to leave the top corners because those will add more shadowy detail to it. And just kind of like erase it right down through the middle. There you go. Now you still have some corners. I decided to erase some of the black on the logo because that was a little bit unnatural looking and I wanted it to look a little bit more flat. Uh, the logo and the label look a lot more dirty now, which is nice and it translates really well onto the engine. And the cap looks fine with that little bit of extra AO. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the normal map and the specular and we're going to combine the gloss map with the specular map, just by selecting everything, control A, 
or in my case, I'm just going to select parts of it and increase the contrast a little bit so that it's not so garish white. Uh, the white, of course, is where it's going to shine the brightest and reflect the most light, and the black is where it's not going to reflect any. And I decided to go ahead, go over here, paste it on top, and then set it. I'm just going to go through these settings until I find one that looks about right. I don't want it to be too shiny, and I don't want it to be too dark where it's going to be too matte and boring. So eventually I did find one that was going to split the difference and look really nice. I decided I was going to go ahead and I was going to take the specular map and then drop it on top and then just use that. I couldn't really find one of these maps that combined really well, but normally you can. I eventually did get this to combine really well. It just takes a lot of finagling. Because again, these maps, when you first get them, they are not accurate to what you're actually going to see in an old engine like the GEC. When you combine these things, you're doing a lot of guesswork and it's kind of an imprecise science. So you can expect to have to be able to go through these and copy and paste them and, and get them the way that you want them. Again, there's no color channel in the old GEC. In the modern engines, they do. Usually when you're using a metal material or some kind of a liquid, other matte materials usually don't have a colorful specular in them. And you want to paste that into the alpha. Once you've got your specular done, paste it into the alpha map of your normal, because that's... <laughs> That is where the specularity map lives on New Vegas. And then go ahead, toss that into your folder. Name it what it was originally named if you want to create an overwrite or create a unique name if you want to make a replacement. Now we're going to do... You can kind of see how this is transparent. This is the finished one in NIFScope, which is a third-party tool not made by Bethesda, but it's, it is absolutely vital. You can see that the transparency... Let's go over here. You can see that the transparency translates really well into the engine and it looks like glass. Like it, it fits the bill for what we're doing. It just looks super garish uh, in NIF scope. Like, yeah, that, it looks a lot flatter than it actually is. And that's why we added so many kind of garish, ugly looking details to it in the first place. So if you compare this to the original, you can see that there, the normal. I mean, the alpha that's inside of the diffuse map, that is actually where it's getting its transparency for the glass. So we're going to go over ahead and we're going to copy the way that that alpha channel looks. And we already have one that conveniently looks really similar to it. It just doesn't, it looks a little bit too low contrast. So I went ahead and I combined my gloss and my specular maps until they kind of matched. Those white blobs that you see everywhere are the perspiration, and that's kind of the, the wetness. Um, the new maps that we made didn't contain that, and they were kind of flat, and I didn't export them because my morning was kind of difficult. But the original maps that I did the first time I did this tutorial, and this all came out great, uh, that has that map. So if you, if you ever need to grab one of the masked materials, Go over ahead and set a black layer, like a black solid behind it. And now you have your details back. Collapse it, copy it, close it because you don't need it anymore. At least that's what you say. And then paste it on top of where you're working. And then set it to the opacity type that works the best for you. So mask out the areas that do not appear on this little alpha channel, like those, like those solids don't need to appear. So let's go ahead and make those solid white. There you go. Delete that. Delete it. Go ahead and set a white behind it. There we go. Now we need to co combine these maps. Shave off that little edge that doesn't need to be there. Make that white. And then go ahead and copy and paste this. 
and save this new material wherever it belongs. I'm going to go back over to NIFScope, and now that you've got your materials exported and they're saved into the folder along with everything else, now you can go overhead. This is the inside of the mesh. That's the outside where there are all those cool transparencies. This is how you actually want to save that file path. It's just with the textures. And you can kind of see that that's on the inside. It's kind of, that's where the soda lives. I decided to go over and add a material. And this, I made the emissive and specularity kind of look like soda, which means in the engine, it's, it's going to have like a slight glow to it. So in dark areas, you'll see this glowing a little bit, which I think is unnatural and, and weird. You'll notice that a lot of the bottles in New Vegas and Fallout 3 actually glow a little bit in dark areas, which is garish and ridiculous. But it did make this look better in exterior areas. You don't need to necessarily do that if you do not want to, if you want yours to be non-emissive and not glowing like it's, <laughs> like it's been in the nuclear fallout. But those maps, uh, I wish I probably could have done a lot better on this tutorial had I been voicing it as I was doing it, but this should more or less give you the results. If you guys want me to do this again, <laughs> I absolutely will. Like I said, my morning was really rough, and then I had to go off and do adult work and make money. But I think the results that I came up with came out pretty well. And if you use the legacy version of Indu and Didu, you can do roughly the same thing that I did with the professional version. So if you want me to do this again, tell me in the comments, and I will. I can be a little bit more clear, and I can go over some of the more specific techniques and details that I use. On a hard surface mesh, it's going to be a little bit of a different process, but the tools are more or less the same. And yeah, you guys have fun, and let me know how this goes.